Now we are going to start with the first chemical property of group 14 that is reaction with oxygen, right? As you all know that whenever any substance reacts with oxygen, it forms its oxide. So in the same way, group 14 elements also react with oxygen to form their respective oxides. And if we talk about their general formula, then the general molecular formula of oxide is that they form monoxides, they form monoxides as well as they form dioxides as well as they form dioxides that means they can form mono as well as they can form the dioxides so let us first write the monoxides and dioxides of this family so this is the carbon family carbon silicon germanium tin and lead so if we write about their monoxides first so obviously carbon monoxide will be co silicon monoxide will be sio germanium monoxide will be geo tin monoxide will be sno and lead monoxide will be PBO right so uh, you know that uh, in this uh, that this is PBO and if we talk about the dioxides so let us write the formula for the dioxides also it is CO2 which you are familiar with that is carbon dioxide silicon dioxide germanium dioxide tin dioxide and lead dioxide right and you know that uh, there is a common name for lead dioxide, we call it as a litharge. It has been called as litharge. Right. So, uh, you know that uh, apart from PBO and PBO2, lead also exists uh, in one of uh, the other oxide. Its general formula is PB3O4. So that means lead has three oxides, it exists in monoxides, it exists in dioxide and it exists in this uh, compound also that is PB3O4. And you know that the general formula for this PB3O4, the general name, we call it as Sindur. We call it as Sindur. And you know that how we get it? When we add, like when we have litharge, when we add oxygen to litharge, it becomes pb 3 O4. Right. Other day, uh, uh, like if you talk about the other members, they exist only in this, these monoxides. Right. So here what you see is that they are making use of their plus 4 oxidation state also and some of them are making use of plus 2 oxidation state also means they are forming their compounds in both the oxidation state. So what we see that when they are, when they are making use of their higher oxidation state, they are more acidic they are more acidic and when they are making use of their less oxidation state they are comparatively less acidic they are comparatively less acidic so let us now focus on the nature of their uh, these kind of oxides if we talk about carbon monoxide it is neutral it is neutral if we talk about silicon uh, monoxide it is weakly acidic germanium monoxide it is uh, you can say more weakly, weakly acidic and if we talk about tin and lead they are amphoteric they are amphoteric in nature that means acidic as well as basic character now let us talk about their dioxide so we see that carbon dioxide is acidic in nature silicon dioxide is less acidic than carbon dioxide germanium is more weakly acidic and tin and lead dioxide they are amphoteric in nature that means acidic as well as basic character so that means they are, whether they are present in monoxide state or they are present in dioxide they are amphoteric in nature right so i think you got it that they form monoxide as well as dioxide and this is all about their nature and out of them the uh, tin monoxide and lead monoxide and tin dioxide and lead dioxide they are amphoteric in nature right and in plus 4 oxidation state they are more acidic and in plus 2 they are comparatively less acidic right and they are lead also form uh, the oxide with general with formula pb3o4 also and this is how we can form them and do you know that how we can form monoxides monoxides are formed when you make use of dioxide suppose i need to form silicon monoxide so what i'll do is i'll take silicon dioxide i'll add more silicon to it so when we'll add more uh, silicon to it it will turn into monoxide so whenever you want monoxide what you need to do is you need to take dioxide and you need to add an element uh, uh, to the to that dioxide the same element then you will get the monoxide and this is clear that how pb3o4 is formed it is pbo2 plus o2 it gives rise to pb3 
O4. Now, you know that this is very important to note that carbon monoxide, if we talk about carbon monoxide, it is strongest reducing agent of this group. It is strongest reducing agent. And if we talk about PbO2, it is it is a powerful oxidizing agent. This you need to remember that carbon monoxide is a powerful reducing agent and PbO2 is powerful oxidizing agent. And uh, if, if somebody asks you to show that, uh, that uh, whether uh, this oxide is weakly acidic or the carbon dioxide is acidic or these are emphoteric, so how you need to show is you need to react them with the base, like if they are acidic, react them with base. Right, and if they are emphoteric, react them with acid as well as base. Let me show you. Suppose I have carbon dioxide. As I know, carbon dioxide, silicon dioxide, germanium dioxide, they are all acidic. It is more acidic, it is comparatively less and it is comparatively more less. So how to show them? React them with base because they have an acidic character. So when we will react them with base, they will form salt. So let us take some base, let us say NaOH. So when we react them with this, they form Na2CO3 plus water. So, neutralization reaction happened. So, that is why we have a salt now. So, that means it shows that it is acidic in nature. Likewise, if you have silicon dioxide, so we know that it is again acidic, we can react with NaOH and it will also form sodium silicate that is Na2SiO3 along with that we will get water. The same thing you will do for germanium dioxide and you are going to get Na2GeO3 that is sodium germate. So, these kind of uh, reactions you can use in order to show that they are acidic in nature. And like if you need to show that uh, like suppose I take tin oxide, tin dioxide, I know that it is emphoteric. So, how to show its emphoteric nature? You need to react it with acid and in the same manner you need to react with base because it is having an acidic as well as basic character. So, we will see that here it will form SNCl2 plus water and in the, uh, this side it is going to form Na2SNO3 plus water. Right. So, that means this kind of reaction is just used to show that their nature is emphoteric in nature. So, this is all about the reaction with oxygen. Now, uh, the another property what we are, do, we are doing is reaction with water. So, we have seen that in this case the three members, the first three members, they generally remain unaffected by water. They remain unaffected with water. That means no reaction take place. But if we talk about tin, then tin what happens? Tin react with water giving rise to tin dioxide and along with that we get hydrogen gas. And if we talk about lead, lead actually react with the water to form its oxide. But after the formation, like when its oxide is formed, this oxide forms a thin layer on the surface. And when the thin layer is formed, it makes the lead passive. That means further no reaction take place. So that means lead react, start reacts reacting, but after some time it become passive due to formation of thin layer of its oxide on its surface, which further prevent the reaction to happen. So this is all about the reaction with oxygen and reaction with water.